Today, we talk about building genuine partnerships with businesses with the amazing Kyle Jones. Hello, and welcome to Driven's Fundraising Superheroes Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Shishente, and as an innovator in nonprofit technology, our team at Driven is determined to help you unlock your true fundraising potential. We specialize in donor, volunteer, and member management. I would love to talk to you about your goals, so give us a visit at trustdriven.com to learn more. As a nonprofit, you know how important relationships are in the industry. Building corporate nonprofit partnerships does require some effort and planning, but the rewards can often be well worth the investment. So how do you develop long-term mutually beneficial partnerships with a local business or corporation? This is where Kyle Jones comes in to help. Kyle is the founder and COO of iCreo and believes that a healthy body can lead to a happy mind. Kyle joins the show today to share how his corporation partnered with Mission of Hope to collectively raise awareness and send supplies to Haiti. So thank you so much, Kyle, for sharing your story on the show today. How's it going? How's it going? Good to be here. So can you start off by explaining how important it is for businesses and nonprofits to work together? Do you feel that businesses have a duty to give back to their communities? Yeah, honestly, I think it's important for nonprofits and uh, in any size business to work together, whether it be small, medium or, or some, you know, mammoth sized company. Um, and really, for me, it's always the, the, the total goal of helping each other, right? Regardless of how big or small you are in this world, uh, everybody holds some type of a platform. So to just be able to rally together and help in any way possible, I think is important. I think when people think about giving to nonprofits, they have this astronomical idea in their head. And, you know, sometimes it starts small and builds. So uh, for me, I always tell people to go in with their open mindset and, and give whatever you're comfortable with, right? Don't feel forced to give something massive. Every Everything starts with one. Uh, so, so, so start with something small. Nice. Yeah. And your business has done incredible things with Mission of Hope specifically. So can you share with our audience how that got started? What exactly did you do there? Yeah. So actually, uh, as a local friend of mine here, uh, I would consider him uh, a brother from another mother. <laughs> um, he he, uh, he kind of was doing some work with Mission of Hope. I saw him from a distance. It's not like he had approached me with it originally. And um, I kind of asked him some questions uh, around it. We we go to the same local church. And, and so him and I had some conversations around, you know, giving and spending some time uh, giving, whether it was monetary commitment, whether it was sweat equity, right, and physically doing something. And uh, he just kind of opened up one day. and I said, man, share, share with me about what Mission of Hope is. Uh, let me know, you know, kind of the, the founding thought of the organization and where they're headed. And um, he laid it all out for me. And it was something that, that I felt I was in the right time and place in my life. Um, and the company I cry was at the right time and place in the, in the company's life to, to be able to give back and to be able to give back, like I said, not just from a monetary standpoint, but time. Um, and that is to me, one of the most valuable things on this planet is somebody's time. And so for us to be able to give our time, energy, effort, and, and money and supplies, whatever they needed, um, that, that was something that I felt comfortable we were in a good place to do. Yeah, time really is the most valuable resource for sure. It is, it is. And we did, um, I, I really like to be involved with the things that we do as a company. And so it was something to where, you know, I, I told him up front, I told my buddy, I said, hey, you know, I want to meet the executive team. I want to meet the founders of the company. Um, I want to go over to Haiti. I want to experience this in person. You know, I don't, I don't want to just stay here and say, hey, we're a part of something and, and not really understand the ground floor of it. So um, I did. I did just that. Their executive offices are located in Austin, Texas. Um, so I made the drive out to Austin. I got to meet the founders. I got to meet the executive team. Um, it wasn't just but a few months after that. I actually took a trip to Haiti. Um, I got to meet uh, kind of their operations team on the ground there in Haiti. Uh, I got to see the schools that they're building. I got to see the houses that they're building. Um, I got to see uh, really meet the people that were in these communities, which was huge for me. So. Um, it was something to where I just didn't want to talk to talk and, you know, put out a press release or social media content around I cry on Mission Hope. I, I wanted to be there and I wanted to be a, a big part of, 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 of this in person. So um, those were kind of some of the steps we took in building our relationship 
And then um, obviously a big natural disaster occurred. Uh, it was probably a month or two after I got back from Haiti. And once again, it, they didn't really need money. They needed supplies. You know, they needed stuff to, to really help with that uh, from the recovery standpoint. They've got medical facilities. So, you know, supplies that we could donate from the medical side. Uh, so it, it was much more than, than just saying, hey, I chose this company and we decided to team up with them and, you know, kind of put it in a rear view. That, that was definitely not the case. We were heavily involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really important when you're working with an organization to, to have that connection. Otherwise, it's, you know, the work that you do isn't going to have any meaning and it's just not going to be as impactful. Most definitely. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about how you worked towards getting all the resources and providing the relief for the people impacted by the disaster? What were the steps you took once you found out um, about what was going on in Haiti to actually taking action? Yeah, so it was, it was actually pretty uh, pretty easy, uh, pretty straightforward. <clears throat> I obviously heard about the disaster on the news first, right? It hit, hit, hit news pretty fast. Um, secondly, um, obviously, their, their operations team reached out to me and asked if we could lend any helping hand at all, um, right? They, they're always going to reach out to their partners first. And um, so I said, yes, most definitely we can help. Um, I got with our manufacturers and suppliers for medical supplies. Um, I also got with our marketing team here at the corporate office, and we, we wanted to do something twofold. So number one, we wanted to create awareness for, um, for what happened, right? So get as many people to understand what is actually going on over there. And two, we wanted to be able to give back and donate in whatever form or fashion we could. So um, we actually put a marketing campaign together at all of our locations across the country. And we basically, it was, it was kind of like a two-way street. We said, hey, for every IV that's purchased in the month of, I think it was September. Um, so including our guests, including the people that walk into our building to get them uh, the awareness, right, around the campaign, um, we'll donate one on our behalf. So it was really cool to see our, our, our owners, um, our guests really get involved and in, in understand, okay, well, they're running a promotion around, what is this again, right? Um, this, this disaster release. So it got people to research it. It got people to understand what actually happened over there. So it created the awareness that we were looking for. Um, and then it was a phone call to our suppliers and vendors to say, hey, you know, this is this is something we're looking to do. So be prepared to ship this over to, to Haiti. Um, we got logistics set up at a warehouse in Florida. Um, getting things shipped over there was, was really not that bad. So um, it was it was interesting to see, even though there were so many different parties involved, everybody came together so quickly, uh, which was nice. So. Yeah, you really have to like act fast for that kind yes, of stuff. Yes, most definitely. And that, that's also something I encourage, um, you know, when people do work with nonprofits, a lot of the times it's curveballs. A lot of the times it's, you know, you're you're thinking one thing and the next day something completely changes and you got to learn to work on the fly. And, um, you know, you, you definitely have to move somewhat quickly because the, the people that are in need, that are in true need, uh, there has to be action taken now, not in, you know, two months. <laughs> so... Exactly. So as a business owner, what did you want to know before partnering up with the organization? Was there anything that you were really looking for specifically when you were looking to work with a nonprofit? Yeah, for me, it's a feeling. Um, I, I, I trust my gut a lot. I trust, um, I'm a big person on energy. I, I would, when I sense something, I get that warm sensation. Um, you know, it just resonates. It hits me. And I know deep down in my soul, you know, this is the right decision. And we looked at other, we looked at other nonprofit organizations prior to Mission of Hope and it, nothing really just hit me in the heart, you know, nothing, nothing spoke to me, uh, how I really wanted it to. And, and meeting, meeting the founders of Mission of Hope, uh, meeting their team, um, really digging into the roots of what their mission is. It, it just spoke to me It's something where I, I knew leading some of those meetings, these are the right partners. This is who we need to be um, in a partnership with. And so it just, for me, it was a feeling. Um, I always tell owners, you know, you're, you definitely have to separate business from personal, but um, you got to understand that when you're, when you're partnering up with somebody, especially in a, in a form of this type of relationship, uh, it's got to mean something to you, the owner. Right. It's got to mean something to you. So when you wake up every morning, you have that gut feeling of saying, man, I've got a great partner that we're donating our time and resources to. And 
And it shouldn't be something that's just a contract or just a monetary commitment that you're giving something every month um, just to feel good, right? It should be something a lot more than that. It should be something of substance. Yeah, definitely. And I think meeting the organization that you're partnering with is so critical. Like how could you work with an organization that you've never even seen the inside of their walls before, or even just talking with the people that they serve can be really impactful. So I think that that is really important when you know, you know, right. It's like, a, it's, it's that gut feeling for sure. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Was there anything um, besides that, you know, initial connection that you really wanted to know about the organization? Was there any aspects that were important to you as a business owner um, when you were brainstorming how to, to actually make an impact with their cause? Yeah, I think, you know, for me, it was it was definitely meeting uh, the people that started the company. That was kind of my first checkbox is, you know, I've got to meet these people and make sure that um, our core values align. Right. I got to understand and make sure that the things that we that we look for as far as a, a mission and driving our two companies forward. Right. We're two completely different companies. But at the end of the day, if the leadership team sees, sees eye to eye, you know, their core values match up. Um, things that they're trying to do just in life in general match up. And so for me, it was really understanding, you know, the founders of the company, why did they start the mission of hope and, and why, uh, what, what, what gets them up in the morning and, and makes them do this every day, right? What makes them tick? And um, for me, that, that was kind of the first big checkbox that I looked for. Um, after that, it was making sure that this was real, right? Um, I, being there in person, uh, meeting their team in Austin, flying out to Haiti, um, I, I spent that time doing that to understand that this was real. This was a real initiative that they had put forward. So um, the reality of the situation is, you know, sometimes people don't really vet out uh, partnerships and they don't vet out things they're, they're, they're going into. Um, and so I always, I always tell people the first two check boxes for me is to understand the leadership team, make sure that we see eye to eye and we have the same core values and then really vet this, vet the situation out, vet the partnership out and make sure that it's, it's a real genuine partnership. It's not something where you're going to look back and say, oh, well, that's not really what I was, you know, the, the picture that I was painted online on a website or on a brochure or on a phone call, that's not what these companies are about, right? Um, so really vetting it out and making sure it's something real. And after doing that, because I'm really curious, because um, a lot of nonprofits, you know, they find businesses, but then it's like, how do you do more than just raise donations? How do you really find a way to connect the two the values of your business, the values of the organization together. So I'm really curious if you can explain a little bit more about the promotional packages that you put together. How did you work to try to connect that mission with your own business's values? Yeah, see, that's 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 a great question. And it's something I would encourage every business to do um, and every nonprofit to do as well. M majority of the time, if you're not familiar with nonprofits and you kind of just hear the word donation, you automatically think money. Right. You automatically think dollars. And that's not the case all the time. Yes. Does money get give that that organization the ability to do what they need to do with it? Right. To, to, to spend on what they feel is a necessity at that point in time. A hundred percent. But at the end of the day, I mean, there are certain situations where it's not money they need. It's it's resources. It's a connection. It's um, supplies. It's uh, transportation. I mean, it could. It could be anything. There's so many different things that you could donate um, or, or extend a relationship that you have and, and make sure that's an added value to that organization. So the prime example was kind of what we just did with the disaster relief. Um, when there's a, a hurricane or a tornado or an earthquake or something that really just destroys a community, I mean, there are people that are in need of a lot of medical attention. There's a lot of construction needs that, are, that need to be met. So... Yeah, can money buy all that stuff? It can, but if you have a specific relationship with somebody that can provide medical supplies or somebody that can buy, provide construction services or somebody that can provide transportation services, I mean, a lot of those things from a logistical standpoint are hard to do if you don't have those relationships set up. So for us, um, you know, we're a health and wellness company. We have great relationships with people in the medical field. So um, the first thing that hit my head was, you know, they're definitely going to need medical supplies. They're definitely going to need things to, to recover. There's a lot of people injured over there right now after the, uh, after the relief. Um, there's a lot of people that need medical attention or seeking it, especially in a, in a country like that, where it, you know, they really don't have a very well-established medical community. 
Um, so it, for me, I try to think outside the box and say, you know what, outside of money, what are these people needing right now? Um, and for us, like I said, as a health and wellness company, we have those relationships in the, in the medical field. So it was an easy win for us. So I always tell people, take a look at what you can offer that that organization either needs right now or doesn't have easy access to. Yeah, get creative, really try to fill in those gaps. Yep, most definitely. definitely. And what made you want to do the gift matching instead of just um, like setting a goal of finding a hundred uh, boxes of medical supplies? Like yeah, what made yeah. you want to actually uh, match other people's donations? I love getting our guests involved. Mm -hmm. um, I, once again, it's creating the awareness. So if we have a campaign for whatever it may be, the guest that's buying into that package or that promotion, they're going to try to understand what they're buying into, right? What is the promotion really around? So for me, it created the awareness for the people that were purchasing these products in our locations. They, they wanted to understand what this promotion was about, right? And when they understood that we were doing it to benefit this cause, um, it, it was a, it was a spike, right? It, it, people took off and said, well, yeah, I'll definitely want to buy an IV if they're, you're going to donate an IV on my behalf at no cost to, to me. Right. Um, so for me, the awareness was huge. And um, I, I just thought it was a great way to involve the guests, the customer, um, get more people than just the iCryo home office involved um, in the process. Yeah. So what advice would you give to nonprofits looking to partner with businesses in their community? Was there anything that was really helpful to you in your journey? There was um, transparency. Uh, there was definitely, I mean, nobody's, nobody's perfect. No company's perfect. No organization's perfect, right? So when I meet somebody for the first time, I really just try to throw all the cards out on the table um, and, and, and just be very transparent. I think that was one thing that Mission of Hope did up front. Um, there were definitely some things that they, you know, they shared with me and they said, hey, look, you know, we're not perfect. Here's some of the mistakes we've made in the past. We're growing as a company. Uh, we'll continue to make mistakes because we're not perfect. So it was really setting the stage of, hey, you know, we, we understand that um, we're, we're not a perfect company. We definitely have some room to grow. We definitely have uh, some, some gaps to fill, but we want to work with you in order to perfect these systems, right? And to, and to be a better organization. So um, it, it kind of frustrates me when you go into a first meeting or a first conversation or uh, whatever it may be, and the company that you're trying to do business with paints this outlandish picture uh, of perfection. And in reality, it's like, hey, you know, we're all human beings. Uh, let's just sit down. Let's talk about the reality of what you want, the reality of what I want, and the reality of how we can work together uh, to do some good. So I would say transparency. Transparency has got to be number one um, on that list of if, if you're looking to do business, if a nonprofit is looking to do business with, with a traditional small business or medium or large business, whatever it may be, just be transparent up front. And at the end of the day, if your transparency doesn't get the deal done, that wasn't the company you should be doing business with in the first place. Yeah, that honesty and that open conversation is, is really critical, I think, with any working relationship. Because um, you're right, because nothing's ever going to be perfect. But the real importance comes in how you handle those imperfections, how you problem solve, and how you communicate, really. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. So before we go today, can you let our audience know how they can support you, where they can learn more about um, iCreo, and like how they can get in contact with you? Yeah, definitely. So we're super active on social media. Uh, and most people go directly to our website, iCryo.com, I-C-R-Y-O.com. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. Uh, it, it, we love to communicate with people and, and learn more about our services, learn more about our partnerships, uh, learn more about the things that are happening in the company. We've got locations nationwide, um, New York, Florida, Texas, Midwest, Indiana, you name it. Uh, we're definitely a national brand. Uh, for, for me, uh, our services are part of people's lifestyle, right? We do things to better the health, wellness, immunity um, uh, of just your daily life. And I've never met a person that says they didn't want to look or feel better. And so uh, I, always, I always explain to people, we have a, a service for you that can help in those categories for sure. Um, and like I said, we'd love to connect with you guys uh, on the social platforms. 
Thank you again, Kyle, for joining me on the show. I really appreciate you sharing your time with us. And for those listening, I have linked Kyle's website along with his social media in the description box below. If he would love to connect with you, like you mentioned. And if you'd like to connect with all of us at Driven, you can give us a visit at trustdriven.com. You can listen to past podcast episodes on our website, learn a little bit more about us or join our newsletter. We'd love to have you part of the Driven family. Thank you so much for listening to the show and we'll see you next time on the Fundraising Supergrass Podcast.